Okay, hi. So in this video, we are going to configure Jenkins to to deploy the Docker, uh, deploy to the Docker, right? So let us open Jenkins over here. Uh, we have got the Jenkins over here, and this is our work. This is our job, right? Spring Boot Jenkins job. If you might have seen the, if you are following up from the previous video, so you know that this is our job. So I go to the configure, and inside configure, we have already done the. We have done the build step, right? We have added the build step that is Maven home and we have given it a package command. So I will add one more build step. Because our POM, POM of our Spring Boot project contains the Maven Docker plugin. So adding this build, build step would be possible. So we can say, we can set up Maven home, right? Uh, for this machine and say, uh, Maven home is already configured, right? Pre-configured. And what is the command I want to run? Docker colon build because that is what I ran in the previous video. If you if you are following up from the previous video, I had run Docker colon build in order to kind of uh, push from Spring Boot to the Docker server directly, right? So let's click on apply, save. So now our job configuration is done. So let let it be there. Uh, I will go to the STS now. And inside STS, uh, I will make some changes and then push the changes. Let us say, um, git Jenkins Docker. Done. Save it. And in the pom.xml, I will change the image name, or name of the image which should be deployed to 008. Right, say so VRDM, right? That is what should be the name, name of the image which should be deployed. So far, so good, all well. Uh, let's test it locally once. Locally, right? Not uh, from the Docker. Uh, locally. So we started at 5000. So if I go over here, so get Jenkins Docker, but this is local. This is not from the Docker. Docker is this. So here we should get the output same as that of this one. So hold on, fingers crossed. Um, <coughs> mm, this is our repository. Uh, this is our command prompt, which I would be using to push to the repository. So let me kind of drag this repository a bit over here. So git status, sorry, git status. So we have modified two files, right? POM and uh, REST controller, REST, REST, Taylor REST API. So git add dot. Next is uh, git commit. Uh, Spring boot git Jenkins docker tab. And then ultimately push. Pushed successfully, so you, you can kind of reload this and see if you have got it right. So pushed successfully. Now, if you see, uh, job should be running. So pending, we have got one job running over here. You want to take a look at whether what's the status? You can click on that and go to the console output. So Docker Maven plugin is running now. Initial build was success. Docker Maven plugin is running now. It made it made it. You can see building image 008 VRDM. So that means it has started the process of building the image on host for the Docker host. So now we would be accessing the and running the image from the Docker host. Yes. And once that is done, we can also go ahead and push it to the Amazon AWS cloud, right? That is also something we would be doing in. So step one of three from it, this dependency is done. Adding this thing done, entry point done. Finished success so far, so good, right? So we are here, let me go back to the project. Console output is this, right? Uh, back to the dashboard. So this is complete. Uh, now we can go to the command prompt back and over here 
let me say CLS ones and see Docker images. I do not have that grab thing. Huh? So we are DM008 created, right? And the ID is 93064. So kind of we can take this 93064. So let's kind of run it. So Docker host run. What do I want to run? I want to run this uh, with hyphen p. What do I want to run? 5000 of uh, machine with 5000 of uh, container or of the image. And what do I want to run? Um, maybe I can type in this. Or maybe I can also type in the first three four characters. So, so unable to find out. Oops, sorry. Let me write the 008 008 p r t f. Right. So it will run itself on in Docker host. Then we should be able to access it on any connected machine wherever the port is uh, open. So Spring Boot running good. If uh, as of now this uh, Spring Boot is working with the H2 database, so if you have got the MySQL database, you can run the MySQL image uh, at certain port number in the Docker, right? Then whatever be your uh, MySQL URL, that is, there will be 172.1.2.50 uh, at 3306 or 4406 slash uh, whatever that whatever be the DB URL, right? That you will need to configure in the uh, in the uh, application.yml, right? So Database URL of the doc MySQL image will come in running image will be coming in the application.yml of your STS. That is what you need to configure if you want uh, to use database MySQL database in place of uh, H2. Just about to complete in next few seconds. I started applications in 65 seconds, right? So if I go over here and reload this. Right, so done or good. So the point is we successfully deployed it from, uh, we made the changes to the source code. Uh, we committed and Jenkins uh, uh, was able to build it successfully and deploy it to Docker successfully. In Docker, we have to go and run it. Yeah, that is not something which is automated as of now. Anyone, even we can, we can automate that part also. Running at certain port is also something we can automate, right? That's not a big deal. Anyways, I, anyways I'm not showing that to you as of now. What if I show you everything? <laughs> what you will do? Let me kind of stop it from here and let me also see the running processes and let me also stop the running process, right? PS hyphen in. PS. I want to stop the running process. So, process which is running is uh, 008 uh, ERDM, right? So, I would want to stop this. Stop. Right, so we have successfully stopped it as well. So now port 5000 is again free to be used by someone else. So ideally, it is a good idea for uh, for for, uh, for a project of this scale. Um, you know, something which you are doing for evaluation to test it in the Docker first and then stop it so that port is free and someone else can go ahead and use it because changing port is not a big deal. Even you can change it later on if it is already busy. But you know, you should always release the port um, and the resources if you are not using it, right? So that that was it for now. If I if I reload it now, it won't be running in because I have already stopped it, right? I have already stopped it, so it won't be running in as of now. You can see it is not responding. It will take some time for for that. Resource not found to page page to come up, but yeah, it is not it is not running. So that was all for now. Um, uh, see you all in the next video. Shall I show you? Okay, then in the next video we are going to push this jar file to the AWS, right? So that is also fairly straightforward and easy. Should hardly take us uh, uh, eight to nine, uh, two to three minutes to push it to the AWS and then um, what do you call? deploy it in AWS, right? You can also configure uh, uh, AWS uh, CloudNet plugin, plugin in Jenkins to push directly from Jenkins to AWS. But again, that's a different set of the story. But for now, let's push the jar file manually to the AWS.
we will be doing it in the next video uh, see you in the next video good luck